Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Adam Wood. I work for Barborn Brook Customs Consultancy and I work as the business development manager. My contact details are here should you have any uh, questions following from this presentation. Um, as I'm sure you all know, the UK and the EU struck a last minute free trade agreement on Christmas Eve that came into effect on the 1st of January. Now, the agreement, known as the Trade Cooperation Agreement or the TCA, allows for duty free and quota free imports of the goods if they originate in the other party. So, of course, this creates a huge potential customs duty saving for many businesses, but it really does come with some strings attached. So by signing an FTA, we've effectively swapped one set of problems for another completely different set of problems. So please, please, please do not think that a deal means it's business as usual. Failing to read and comply with all the small print will create a huge exposure for organisations and it highlights a need for a clear custom strategy and planning advice. So this is just a really brief two uh, slide five minute video showing why the rules are so complicated and highlighting why businesses should seek professional advice if they suspect potential exposure. So uh, let's break this down uh, in terms of the, uh, the conditions uh, within the FDA in more detail. So the key requirement is that the product must meet very, very specific origin list rules to qualify for tariff free access. So these origin list rules change depending on the customer's classification or commodity code of the product. So obviously the first um, task is to determine the correct classification. This is really difficult in itself as there's over 16,000 lines in customs tariff, each with their own rules and definitions, which are often at odds with ordinary or trade usage definitions, which just adds to the complexity. So if you get the wrong classification, obviously you're left applying for the wrong origin list rule. So it's really key. Once you've determined the commodity code, then you can look up the origin rule. There are several types of origin list rule. Uh, requiring different levels of transformation between the component inputs and the finished output. So the rule could be based on limiting the percentage value of non-originating materials used in making the goods, requirement of the materials to be classified differently to the end product, or the product being manufactured from a certain stage, or just to make it more complicated, it could be a combination of any of these rules. So if that isn't complex enough for you, the FTA also includes several technical concepts that extend or restrict the scope of the origin rules. So these esoteric concepts include minimal processing, tolerances, segregated accounting, unit of qualification, specific sets and accessories rules and accumulation. The, the latter concept is critical, actually, as it allows for accumulation between the UK and the EU. So i.e. a product originating in a party shall be considered as originating in another party if that product is used as a material in the production of another product in that other party. So this point gained public attention in relation to the EU's refusal to allow accumulation of the Japan FTA, which effectively frustrates all Nissan's cars in Sunderland qualifying for tariff-free access to the EU. So these concepts might sound very dull and off-putting, and they probably are, but they're also very, very vital. So. Once you understand the specific origin list rule that applies, you now need to turn to a detailed exercise of proving that it's met. This can require a deep dive into cost accounting in the case of value added rule or how an engineering and supply chain analysis in the case of tariff change based rules. Any analysis often requires collaboration with suppliers, so please do not assume that something sourced from the UK or the EU originates there. It could have in turn been imported from somewhere else. It is necessary to gather and maintain evidence for when the customs authorities come knocking. Um, I'm sure you all know, but the, uh, the the use of an FTA is subject to an audit based control. Now, what that actually means is you need to keep uh, records for years. Um, failure to satisfy an audit can result in additional duty demands, penalties, seizure of goods, and the liabilities can just snowball over time. So once this is all in place, we can turn our attention to the mechanism for making a claim. The importer must ensure that the customs declaration is filled in correctly to actively make a claim. They usually require the exporter to provide them with a specific set of words on commercial documentation. It is usually necessary for the importer to request this from the exporter, but really important point, if the exporter gets this wrong, then the importer can end up paying the duty. 
We would also recommend checks are carried out to ensure preference was in fact claimed. Um, this is one of the most common mistakes we see when carrying out client reviews. It often results in uh, well lost savings and it can be, can be substantial. Um, although in fairness, there are steps that we can take uh, as a customs consultancy to recover the position if this applies to you. So if that does apply, obviously, uh, keep in mind that there are steps we can do to uh, to help you out there. Um, so I wanted to leave you with a checklist of actions that we recommend for uh, both the importer and the exporter, uh, and I'll leave you to read these. I won't go to each one. They're quite self-explanatory. Um, uh, as discussed, the requirement for goods to originate represents a significant burden of proof and should be documented fully. So any errors can lead to additional duty demands, penalties, seizure of goods and lengthy investigations. So we advise both importers and exporters to prepare in advance uh, for any post-importation origin, uh, origin audits and have outlined the steps here. So just uh, maybe take a screenshot of that and, uh, and work to that to give you a bit more clear, clear advice as to, to, uh, to, to what to do going forward. Um, now, given the complexity of everything I've just discussed, um, of the area in general, uh, and of all the strings attached to the FDA, we would recommend that you take professional advice in order to maximise the benefits and minimise the risks involved in using this FDA. So, if the uh, origin rules cannot be met, there are uh, several other uh, customs duty relief regimes that may apply or, um, to reduce any customs duty costs. So um, just as an example as one of those, inward processing relieves customs duty on materials imported into the UK for processing and subsequent export. So many of these reliefs can be used in conjunction with an FDA to further extend the savings. So to conclude, a, key, a clear custom strategy has never been more essential uh, and I really can't stress that enough. Any grey areas around customs planning and the use of this FTA is clearly a grey area and it can present a huge exposure for any organisation. So businesses should seek urgent advice if any of the above that we've discussed relates to their specific operations. Um, obviously, my contact details were on the, uh, the very first slide. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that come um, from uh, you hearing this presentation. And uh, yeah, look forward to, uh, to speaking to you um, should you have questions. And uh, thanks for your time.